Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. As you can tell from the thumbnail, we're going to be implementing a swipe to refresh functionality here. It's pretty common in a lot of applications. I'm sure you've actually used this without realizing it, but today we're actually going to show you how to use it. Uh, and it is quite simple. So I've built this little demo app here. Um, as we click this button, we just randomly generate a background color here. And then as we start the swipe gesture here to pull down, we can see at the top that little, you know, pull to refresh icon starting. Uh, and then once it completes, it kind of goes completely black. And then from there, we actually just reset the background to be white. And then the refresh icon goes away. So let's jump right into it and teach you how to do it. Before we get started, though, it'd be really wonderful if you can give the video a like, share with anybody that you think would enjoy it, and consider subscribing if you are brand new. So first steps here is we're going to have to implement the swipe to refresh layout. Very simple import here. Uh, it's really straightforward. It's all we need, but we do need to do that. And then we do need to sync our Gradle files here uh, and make sure everything is up to date. But after that, um, you're ready to go here. So that's really all we need to do in the uh, Gradle file there. And other than that here, our main activity is pretty bare and there's nothing going on at the moment. So we'll go ahead and complete this little project. The only other thing is adding in view binding here to just make our lives a little bit easier when accessing views. Well, let's hop over here to the layout, Let me close this for a second, and we can talk about it. So once you import and update your project with the swipe to refresh uh, dependency, you will get a new layout uh, UI element here. And so simply all we do is we're going to go ahead and wrap our base layout here that was just a constraint layout that had a text view in it, but I converted it to be a button so we can click it. We just wrap that inside of this swipe to refresh layout. There's really no other magic to it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the only caveat here is if you are using something that does scroll, i.e. a recycler view in here, please make sure that it's the only depend, the only child of the swipe refresh layout. Um, this could be limiting in some senses, but it just helps with the scroll and doesn't yield any weird uh, behaviors. But in this case, we're just simply uh, basically just having a button on screen and the constraint layout just helps us put it somewhere. Uh, so that's about it. We just implement this uh, layout here, uh, add that in, and then we can start getting into the code of things, right? So it's a very simple application. You can open it again, but there's a button. And as we click it, we generate a random number, uh, a random background here. So we will go with uh, binding.background. That's the name of our constraint layout. Uh, sorry, we care about the button. We want to set an on-click listener here. And then we can say binding.background. Um, dot set background color and from here we can actually use a fun uh, little helper method tool here called color the color class and specifically the color.rgb and we could just generate three random numbers here for red green and blue integers and then that will actually generate a random color here for us so we're just going to go ahead and uh, create a private function to actually do the generation for us so get uh, random int so return an int why don't we be smart about it and actually add what we call a limit here um, or at least what i'm calling a limit and then we can simply return the math dot random this is going to yield a double from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 so we can actually take that multiply that number by 255 and then we can wrap all of this in parentheses and call dot to int on it and now we will get a randomly, instead of a random number from zero to one, uh, like a random double, we will now get a random number integer from zero to 255. So then we can just call get random int for the red value and then get random int for the uh, other two values here. And that's it, perfect. So we can go ahead and quickly rerun this and this will actually just generate um, uh, a random color here at every time we click. But as we pull to swipe to refresh here, we see that uh, nothing is actually happening. The UI element is reacting and working, and you can see that right here, right? And now we're kind of in a weird state where um, obviously the UI is a little bit broken. So actually interacting with our swipe to refresh layout is also pretty straightforward. Um, so obviously we have an ID so we can reference it, but we have the swipe to refresh layout, and then the set on refresh listener is working very similar to the idea of a set on click listener, right? This block of code is going to execute every time this button is clicked. Well, this block of code here 
is going to execute every time we pull this thing down and it starts this little spinner. So we can very easily just take uh, the exact same thing, exact same code here, but we will, uh, let's see, white is, uh, is it zero, zero, zero? Red, green, blue? I think so. And then black would be 255? No, this might be black. Yep, that's black. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna change this to 255 instead of uh, zero. And then I think we can actually imagine what would happen here. And so rerunning it again here, we are just gonna change the background color. And then we can see as we pull, swipe to refresh, pull down, we do set it back to white. Uh, now we do have this one little bit to clean up here and that is just going to be also pretty straightforward. So we're gonna grab our swipe to refresh layout. And then we can say is refreshing equal to false. And that will actually go ahead and terminate that little spinner thing from working um, or from, from constantly being there. So now it actually works as expected here, pretty straightforward. Um, obviously this is a very trivial example here and it's not a common use case, but just showing off the idea and the functionality behind this particular UI element. Um, you can notice that there's, when it's completely black, that's the only time it will start to refresh. If it goes that grayish color, it will actually kind of not do that. So the user definitely has to make a nice gesture in order to do this. And if your content scrolled here, um, if they were halfway down the list and they were pulling down the screen like this to scroll up the list, the swipe to refresh layout is smart enough to know, hey, there's more content to scroll vertically. So don't begin this motion until they're at the top of the list and then they still try to uh, pull down from there. So yeah, as I mentioned, it is a, a very trivial example, but it is very possible here that you could do any kind of refreshing behavior at this point in time. Um, so you can very easily invoke a view model or some other area of your code to say refresh. And in many cases it's making another network call or, or reloading data from a database or who knows exactly what, but um, networking is a pretty common pattern here. So it is pretty popular that you would invoke some other IO operation. And then um, when your view layer here, in this case, the activity would receive that information back, you could then invoke this and the refresh thing would go away at that point. And if the network call took half a second, that thing would just be floating there, circling for half a second, giving the user feedback that something is going on, and then uh, obviously going away when that data has come back, or if there's an error, you handle the error and display it, but whenever the refresh is complete. But that's basically about it, folks. There's really not too much behind it. Um, there's a simple import that you need to have, then there's just a little bit of layout magic that you need to uh, incorporate, which really isn't a whole lot. And then the actual implementation in code is very, very simple. One little block of code, flipping a Boolean here, and that's about it. So thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate a like. If you are brand new or if you have learned something, I really appreciate subscribing to the channel. And I will be back in the next one with a little bit more. Have a great day.